Would uh, Sheriff Lamberti please come up to the stage? And would the Palm Beach Community College, would the, you please come up and the scholarship recipients? I just want to say that it is our pleasure to partner with the Palm Beach Community College and provide them with, with uh, resources to be able to sponsor and fund uh, these, these students to become future police officers. So Jerrica, I know, wants to say a few words. So if you'd come up, Jerrica, first. Hello, good evening. My name's Jerrica Mendelson, and I'm 24 years old. And I'm horrible at doing speeches, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm proud to say that I just recently graduated from the Palm Beach Community College Police Academy. Thank you. People often ask me why I would want a career in law enforcement. There are many reasons, but the obvious one is because I like to help others. I understand that being a police officer is no ordinary job, which is why it takes a certain kind of person to do the job. I want to help fight the bad for the greater good of everybody. We've all heard of the term fight or flight, the term used to describe how a surge of adrenaline in the body will make someone react when faced with a threat or dangerous situation. Some people will fight through a situation while others will forget everything they know and simply run for safety. But what determines whether a person will fight or flight? My whole life, I found myself doing the unusual, sticking up to bullies that preyed on the weak, who many times were quite capable of beating me up, helping to change a tire for a stranger. I even remember climbing up a 100-foot tree to help my friend who couldn't get down, and we both ended up hugging the stump of this huge tree uh, until the fire department arrived with ladders. And oh, by the way, that made reality TV, seriously. So you could say I wasn't your average teenage girl. While other girls were playing with Barbies, I was returning home with scuffed up knees from playing with the boys in the neighborhood. My mother used to ask me why I couldn't just be like my other sisters. But my father always took pride in calling me his little tomboy. I remember when 9-11 occurred, many people would say that I'm glad I wasn't on that plane. And I remember thinking, I wish I was on that plane and maybe I could have made a difference. It's people like us in law enforcement who find ourselves running into bad or dangerous situations while others are often running away from them. I believe that certain people are put on this earth to defend and serve, and without these people, we wouldn't be able to enforce the laws and protect every individual's right to freedom and justice. I eventually would love to get into special inv investigations, otherwise known as sex crimes unit, which is responsible for investigating all allegations of child abuse and neglect. I am currently certified and I'm actively seeking employment, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. I want to thank the Bobby Resonati Healing Heart Foundation and the Resonati family for the wonderful foundation that has helped enable me in pursuing these dreams. It is donors like these that can really turn a person's dream into reality. Thanks to the Resonati family, students like me have the chance to make a world a better place for everyone. And I want to thank you so very much for helping me change my life and pursue that dream. Thank you. I'd like to bring Sue Ellen Mann. Good evening. Um, you know, the power of Publix is incredible. When you all stood up um, and then the vendors stood up, it's really an awesome commitment and I'm very proud and I salute you. And my daughter looked at me and said, we shop at Publix, can we stand up? I said, okay, maybe later. Um, I never had the privilege of meeting Bobby in person. Uh, but as you can well imagine, I see him reflected in the faces of the students that we do get to work with as a result of the um, Bobby Resiniti uh, Foundation. And, um, you know, economists tell us that the world is divided into haves and have-nots. But really, the world is divided into givers and takers. And I am very privileged to stand in a room of 943 people who are givers. And that is a rare distinction. I want to tell you what your giving has done. The first year of the Bobby Resiniti Foundation came to us. Um, we were able to sponsor 10 students. Jerrica is one. She is now graduated. This year, um, because of your generosity, and this is what you folks here have done, uh, we created an endowment so that um, last year you gave us the money, we gave it out to the students, and it was a wonderful thing. Now, this year, you gave us some money, we endowed that money, it will be saved for all time, and we will spend the money, the investments off of that. So for all time, this legacy will be there. All future students at Palm Beach Community College will be able to uh, attend the criminal justice in Bobby's memory, and I think that's a great thing. So I want you to know 
know that's what you have done, and we appreciate it. And we have our cadet here tonight, um, Ashley. So um, thank you very much for all of your support. Okay, good evening. I was not prepared for this one at all. I was sitting there like, okay, I'm, I'm about to buckle. My knees are about to fall. Don't fall, don't fall. Okay, um, first off, I want to say, control your breathing. Thank you so very much to each and every one of you. When I found out that it was two of us that received the scholarship, I was like, oh my God, you know, I am so blessed and I thank you, I really do. It, it was, it, you know, and when I found out about it, I was like, well, how does it coincide with, you know, why the criminal justice got the scholarship? I went on the website and I looked up the name and I went and looked into Bobby Resaniti, sorry, and I was like, okay. And then uh, someone told us, well, told me and the other recipient, which looks like a big hot chili pepper right now because his eyes are swollen from the pepper spray from yesterday, um, <laughs> that he was in the Criminal Justice, Criminal Justice Academy. Um, I was like, wow, you know what? We're really blessed for that, and I thank you again. Thank you, all of you, for your support and your help. And um, I'll be quiet now. Thank you. Al Lamberti. Thank you, Bob. Well, good evening. Bob, I know you invited me here last year, and unfortunately I, I wasn't able to be here, but I, I said I definitely would be back this year. And in my absence last year, we had several of our deputy sheriffs from the Broward Sheriff's Office came here and presented a deputy sheriff's badge uh, to Bob on behalf of Bobby. We all know that was his dream, and I thought that would be the, probably the most appropriate thing to do. Uh, he wanted to be a sheriff. And I was glad we were able to do a little bit towards that dream uh, last year. And it's kind of ironic because in 1976, I graduated from Palm Beach Community College with uh, my associate's degree in law enforcement, and that got me started. And 32 years later, never in the history of Broward County has the sheriff of Broward County ever come up through the ranks. And I'm proud that I'm the first one. And Bob, I don't, can I hire somebody from my alma mater? Am I allowed to do that? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, well, here's my card. If you can come down Monday morning and apply, we'd love to talk yeah. to you. That's it. And besides the one jet fan, is anybody else here from New York? We have, we have New Yorkers here, right? Okay. Well, tomorrow, November 7th, in New York City, the United States Navy is going to be commissioning its latest warship, the USS New York. And, and if you didn't hear, seven and a half tons of steel recovered from the World Trade Center went into the hull of that ship. And that ship after tomorrow is going to take 300 sailors and 800 marines to wherever it needs to go to defend our freedom. Yeah. Right. And the motto of that ship is never forget. And it's there so that we don't forget the 3,000 people that died in the tragedy of September 11th. But never forget should not apply to just the people who died at the World Trade Center. It should apply to all those loved ones that we've lost in tragedies, no matter what they have been. And we should use those words, never forget, again, not for those, just those people at the World Trade Center but for people like Bobby. And so I'd ask you, as you leave tonight, think about those two words. Never forget tomorrow as they commission that newest ship. And think about those two words every time you come to this event, every single year. It doesn't apply to just those 3,000 people. It applies to all of our loved ones that we have lost. Bobby, thank you for inviting me here tonight. I'll be back next year for sure.